stock market is closed today? I did not know that. We're at number 83. I've got my delicious homebrewed coffee here. And a banana. And let's chat. If you're tuning in to the Morning Banana Show from home, you might have seen on Twitter, if you follow me on Twitter, at adamjosh.com, that I had uh, a guest scheduled today. And for scheduling reasons, um, tentatively, that morning banana show will be tomorrow. So it'll be number 84. This is a really good banana. So, Danielle Dontremont, the maritime medium. Hmm will be calling in tomorrow. Virtual guest. I was thinking to have my Skype call type thing where I'm talking to her and she's right there. So, got it all set up. We'll do that tomorrow. That would be cool. And, uh, yeah, so stay tuned. I'll announce, um, I'll announce that tomorrow or later today on the Twitters. Moving right along, tomorrow, today is, uh, like I said, it's uh, the 4th of July, if you're into celebrating um, independence. And uh, one thing, one thing that uh, most Americans are probably feeling right now is uh, not very independent. Or free. So, you know, this lockdown, this lockdown and um, being stuck at home and whatnot, that was going to last two weeks. That was, the, what, the beginning of, end of March, end of April, or beginning of April, end of March. Here we are in uh, July 4th. A lot of people stuck at home for a while. A lot of non-essentials. So, uh, I know how it feels. Uh, we finished our children's year of school, grade four and grade one. Desiree and I became at-home teachers, which is fine. I enjoyed that. And they graduated, which was nice. A lot of, I think a lot of um, people became, a lot of parents became teachers' assistants during this lockdown and this uh, coronavirus season. And uh, some parents probably were uncomfortable with that or didn't like it. Uh, maybe parents who are used to being at work or like to use work as an escape from their family. Um, other things that have been happening is, and Desiree and I talked about this a while ago on another Morning Banana show, but um, relationships are suffering, people are getting divorced and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, being locked up with your family brings out the, the real in, in everybody. Uh, it just so happens that I really do like Desiree, and I really like the kids, so we haven't had any major blowouts. If anything, we just kind of want to go outside. We go to the skate park that's near our house. Luckily, we have a trampoline and a garden in the back. I don't, I don't know how people cooped up in small apartments have been handling it, but good for them. Um, if they can. So, yeah, this lockdown, uh, things, you know, are starting to open up in certain areas, and another situation that's been happening is uh, this mask situation. So, in California, 
they're saying it's mandatory in Florida. I've heard indoors and outdoors in California, which makes no sense, like indoor inside your own house. In Ontario, as far as I know, up until this point of filming, Toronto has made masks. The city of Toronto, which is a few million people, has, or at least a couple million. Population of Toronto. No! Let's look it up. Current population of Toronto. Let's see if this works. Can I speak into this? I don't know how to use Macs. I'm pretending I do. I'm not a Mac fan. This is Desiree's thing. Population of Toronto. There we go. Whoa. Toronto. Current population of Toronto. I said, what did I say? A couple million? 2.93 million as of 2017. So we can safely say there's 3 million people there. So 3 million people in Toronto um, have have been manda mandated by bylaw to wear facial coverings or masks. Uh, any inside place. So like a mall, theater, I guess a beer store? grocery store. Um, so reading that and about the other mask news, one can't help but think mask manufacturer stock is going to be soaring, right? So some of you may know I have started dabbling in the stock market. So I got uh, some stock of a company called Alpha Protec, which um, is affordable. If you're looking to buy stocks, it's a uh, 17. I bought at 17 dollars and 16 cents. So right now it's like high 17 is going into 18. It's been back and forth from 18 and down, but um, you know, comparable stock companies, which you can't really compare 3M and Honeywell to um, uh, an underdog Alpha Protec, but the 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 larger companies that make masks are trading at. Uh, a hundred dollars a share or more. So buying one at 17 and assuming that people are going to need more masks coming up, you know, call me crazy. But uh, I invested in some, we invested in some stock and I think, you know, so far we haven't lost our money. So if the stock goes up, that'd be great. If not, we'll just take our money out in a couple months. I'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Sort of a long-term buy low, sell high type of thing until we get some more experience with trading. So yeah, something I've been able to learn from home a little bit is about the stock market. And I am not, I am not a, I'm, I'm extraordinarily novice when it comes to the stock market. So um, I, I could say that I had, I had some good teachers um, and I had some, I've emailed a couple stock companies actually that I have because uh, my grandma, uh, rest her soul, bought me some stocks when I was a child, and I think that she's looking down on me from wherever and and smiling and happy that I got into real time trading digitally. I think she would like that, so I decided to take her paper stocks, the old school stocks that she bought me in like. Uh, Sears, CN Rail, stuff like that, and, and digitize them. So I've been contacting their transfer agents trying to get the, um, the old paper stocks. I have an actual certificate that says I own part of Bell Company, you know, the Bell. So I have those old stocks, Sears and some defunct companies. And my plan is to digitize whatever has some monetary value. And a few of them do have some monetary value, like, thanks, Grandma! <laughs> and put that into our stock trading portfolio that we have now. So, slow moving start, but I'm 100% further than uh, where I was, and I know 100% more than I did a while ago, so something like a year ago, so sometimes you just have to get it. I've been in this um, learning about the stock market thing for a few months now, so um, I have a couple guy friends that talk to me that are asking me about the stock market now and I feel like, you know, I know a little bit more than I did a while ago, but I don't know a lot. I can tell you what I know. So, which is not a lot. <laughs> so, 
So if you only know enough to buy low and sell high, you don't know anything about the stock market. And uh, my account is limited to what I can do right now, so I'm doing what I can. And canning what I do. <laughs> 4th of July, I don't know, crazy times, right? Like, uh, I'm still on employment insurance, some of you may know. Uh, in my life, I've never been on a government handout before, and I don't think that employment insurance is really considered a government handout when it's your own money given back to you. Um, but uh, that EI runs out in two months, so I'll be, like the rest of you, jobless and um, incomeless. So I thought, well, as a, as a backup plan, I should learn a new skill. So, you know, I can do a lot of things for money. I'm not too worried. And uh, I do plan on going back to work, by the way. So, you know, if, if all else fails, though, I could just busk on the corner for change every day, I guess. You laugh, but I've done that. I've done that and not made a lot of money. And you know what made me the money when I was busking was playing other people's songs. So, I didn't like doing that. Um, I'm almost done with my banana. We'll wrap it up. You can follow me on Twitter, at AdamJosh.com. Um, my website is AdamJosh.com. Some interesting articles that I've been kind of reflecting on lately is, um, I've written an article on my website called The Grand Con of Globalism. And another one was, um, that I've really been reflecting on lately was um, Becoming Like Water, Dissolving the Kingdom. I would recommend those if you haven't read, read them. There's so much we could talk about in the world going on right now, ramping up for another election season. <clears throat> Do you think that Donald Trump is really, really going to run again? I think he might drop out when he sees his poll numbers, because he's always said, he's always said that you know, he doesn't want to run if he doesn't know he's going to win, like a sore winner. I'm not going to, I'm not going to even play unless I can win. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people would like him to not even run. Imagine a Joe Biden presidency, pre presidency though. I can. He's like 77. So, more importantly, who's his running mate? Who would be his VP? Have you ever seen in history a vice president become president? Crazy times. So I don't really know what to say. I was pretty. I was. I was more vocal in the 2016 election because, um, you know, back then I felt like more involved, and uh, I had opinion. I had an opinion. I was like, Hillary Clinton is. Satan looks up to Hillary Clinton. She's a piece of work. And now we're living with the uh, Trump. Lonely and dreaming of his diaper rump. I don't want to be your running mate. I don't want to be your president in 2020. I don't think that Joe Biden is presidential material. <laughs> if, if you could even if he even knows what what planet he's on right now, um, and uh, Trump, I mean, you had four years to deliver and you couldn't do it, and all you did was blame 
everybody else. You exposed yourself as just another globalist shill. If you're the president, then be the president. Don't blame everybody else. So, he couldn't president in four years. So, what makes you think he's going to president in eight? I don't know. But, um, yeah. It's a nice way of saying it. I don't, I don't really have a lot of faith in uh, Donald Trump. And if he, can, if he can wrap everything up and deliver uh, the things that he campaigned on in the last couple months of his presidency, then my opinion can change. Everybody's allowed to have a changing opinion. Um, but it's a lot of work to do, right? I've written before how, how it can happen, and I don't, I don't see it happening at this point. The most latest development is uh, the FBI arresting Ghislaine Maxwell. And uh, if that goes the way that uh, arresting... Jeffrey Epstein did, then, you know, we won't hear much from Gillian Maxwell. <clears throat> so, in other news, stay tuned tomorrow when we have a little bit more upbeat guest. I, I apologize that it didn't work out today. Uh, but again, it's scheduling conflicts, scheduling issues, and we will be back tomorrow with uh, potential Maxim cover girl Danielle Entremont, the Maritime Medium. You can follow her on Twitter. Uh, I think it's at Maritime Medium. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow, ideally, in the morning, the Morning Banana Show. Uh, and uh, it'll be number 84. So take care of yourselves. And toodaloo. I'm going to turn this off now. Follow me on Twitter at AdamJosh.com. Bye-bye.